and welcome to the Book by Book, a podcast about the odd book or two you've read. I'm your host, Scott, and I'm not alone. Baby's here too. This episode, we're talking about The Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell. It's going to be a light to mid spoiler level warning, so if that's okay with you, continue on, and I'll see you on the other side. hay fever season for me mm-hmm. whatever i'm allergic to is pollinating now it's been a quite a lot rainy recently right now with the sun booming i'm, I'm assuming that's just perfect for flowers pollinating <laughs> flowers are like yay <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, yeah, it's, it's it, a pain in the ass having hay fever you're literally just allergic to you know outdoorsiness and, yeah and summer that i can't imagine i'm 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 blessed in that i don't have or haven't suffered or hopefully will ever suffer from hay fever um but i can't imagine suddenly the, the outside being your enemy that would be horrific mm, it's i guess it's just some of the things you get on with you take an antihistamine maybe some eye drops mm. and then like it doesn't last all summer it's just while well, this plant is pollinating or if you unluckily live near something like a big field or something Right. I did read hay fevers on the up, like just the, the I guess global. I don't know the strange global phenomenons of of hard weather and different weathers mm-hmm. and all sorts of stuff. Has just like there's been an influx percentage of hay fever. It's it's odd. I think I was reading is it cicadas? There was some sort of bug in America that just comes out at a certain temperature, and it, okay. it just hasn't been at this kind of temperature for a long time, like seventy years. So oh, out wow. of the blue, this bug just sprung around. We had it here. <laughs> We had some sort of invasive black spiked caterpillar. Oh, wow. And they were everywhere and it was gross. Really? And I went for the, I got <laughs> on a, like a bus and I went for a hike in these woods. Mm. And like, I sort of saw them around the street, around trees. And it is just like some, if you see a horror film where they cut to mm-hmm. maggots and it's like a sea of it. And because I was in the woods, um, they were just hanging, like a cocoon hanging. So I would what? just walk into them in my face and like, you can't walk without stepping on them. And they're not oh like a nice, gosh. I mean, any bug in lot. mass is quite gross. Yeah. We once had like ladybirds, our window in London. And you think, oh, one or two ladybugs, that's kind of cute. No. And you get them in like the, the tens and hundreds. It's like, oh, this is kind of gross. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, I had the delicate. same problem. They're quite delicate to sweep up about crushing yeah. them in your hand. It's but Yeah, I had a similar problem with ladybirds in uh my flat and you just wake up and they'd be just like carcasses mm, the carpet you to everywhere keep, keep like, the window the shut going on? basically for for a massive chunk of summer that year yeah, it's like they all uh, came there to die or something <laughs> oh, no. oh toby let's just keep this episode clean i just figured it's like a kid's book so we're potentially oh, yes. more gravitating mm-hmm. very good point so yes a kid's book mm. well welcome viewer to the doggy page cafe good morning good mm. afternoon and good night depending on when you're listening and the book by book with me, Obi, and your host, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Toby's getting Re- professional. He's gone, yeah. he's gone deep Re- radio Re- voice. Reverse the, uh, the, the intro a bit there. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so yes, well, today we're going to be recording, podcasting, reviewing, that's the word I was looking for, The Wizards of Once mm. by, how do you say her name, Scott? Cressida Cowell. Ah, Cressida Cowell. It's a nice or name. Cowell. Cowell or Cowell. 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 Cressida Cowell. Yes. We're making her sound exotically French. She's English. Yeah. I thought she was Italian. <laughs> she's English. Mm. Oh, cool. Well, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, I do know that because I've got a blurb just a bit about her, actually, because I didn't know anything about her mm. apart from that she's quite well known and revered for the Hiccup series or How to Train Your Dragon mm-hmm. books, of which there are many. And there's also a cartoon and an animation and some films mm. and every kind of medium you could possibly imagine associated to it. It must so, be so nice when something mm-hmm. gets picked up and it's good. Mm. I don't know if you're like a Ursula, Ursula Le Guin fan, but she's been very like captive of her work. Like I, it can't be made into an adaption. Right. And then Studio Ghibli approached her mm-hmm. for the Earthsea series. Okay, yeah. yeah. So she was a well, I, that's something I can't say no to. Mm-hmm. They have a very high record. That's the one like the main guy's son directed and mm. it's absolutely slated as being like the worst thing they've ever done ever. Mm-hmm. Oh, that must be that's cutting. Yeah, <laughs> when you you yeah. I mean, no, I, I guess it's still it. like you know you know how someone feels about it. Like when they actually, well, I actually liked it, sort sort of thing. Yeah, but it must be. I, 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 yeah, I haven't seen that one. Off. No, I, yeah. To be clean, I haven't. 
So mm. when I'm slating it, it's just a general consensus review. <laughs> You're doing a five page Katie, chuck it in the <laughs> bin. <laughs> um, so yeah, a little bit about Bressa de Colwell. Mm-hmm. She grew up in London and on a small uninhabited island in Scotland. She was convinced that this island was inhabited by dragons and has been fascinated. If that's with... influenced her in her mm. adult writing in any way. Quite possibly. And has been fascinated by dragons ever since. She has a BA in English Literature from Oxford University, a BA in Graphic Design from St. Martin's, and an MA in Narrative Illustration from Brighton. And she did not stop studying she didn't. She went all in. <laughs> she goes to show you. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Chrisida, I've, I've forgotten. What is it? Chrisida. Chrisida yeah. de Cowell. Chrisida. Chrisida. Love, yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> uh, uh, loves illustrating her own work. She is most well known for a unique blend of child centered humour and sublime prose that can be found in abundance in the well known Hiccup series, aka How to Train Your Dragon. But we're not here to talk about How to Drain Your Dragon. Mm-mm. We're here to talk about Wizards of Once. Nice. Does the series have a name? Is it the Once Wizards? No. I don't know. Maybe the Once series? Mm. It's a fun name. Yeah. It's that thing where like, you say it perfectly, and if I stop to think about it, it falls apart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like a sort of yeah. like uh, a slow riddle. Like she's saying, there's going to be four. Mm-hmm. And I think at this time, all four are out. Definitely three, around. right? Okay. Um, I'm a bit. I've, I've been listening to interviews of her all day yesterday, and I'm a bit mm. mixed up with what's coming out when. Definitely, <laughs> I'm pretty sure three are out at this moment. And if the fourth one's not out, it's. I think I don't know. I'm not gonna say it's coming out soon because I might have made that up. Yeah. But she's her plans are that it's a quartet, like they are. Right. Okay. In this series. Mm. Okay, so I'll give you a quick synopsis mm-hmm. of the Wizards of Once. Once there were wizards who are magic and warriors who were not. But Tsar, the son of the king of the wizards, can't cast a single spell, and Wish, the daughter of the warrior queen, has a banned magical object of her own. When they collide in the wild wood on the trail of a deadly witch, it is the start of a grand adventure that might just change the fabric of their worlds. With trademark wit and the same stunning combination of action, adventure, heart, humour and the incredible artwork that made How to Train Your Dragon a beloved best-selling franchise, The Wizard of Once will transport and bewitch its readers. Nice. Hmm. I, I, this is my recommendation. I was the one that brought this to the table mm-hmm. as uh, the one to read. Um, you... It's very off-piece for what, we've, what we're used to reading, I'd say. I think it's the outside chooses your own, which aren't really mm. reviews. It's just a little fun, fun. Yeah, choose your own. Uh, I think this is the first one we try to review. That is certainly the youngest age range. What? How did you come across this? Like a like a thrift find or no? Uh, or... I have a friend, and she has kids, and she recommended it to me. Mm. Basically, she'd read it to one of her kids and then they just ran with it and have read all of the ones since and then all the hiccups. And she said that she really enjoyed it. And I really liked the cover. I loved some of the artwork that was on the, that I saw when I flicked through it in the bookshop one day. And then I just came across it in a, like you say, a thrift store or charity shop and grabbed it. The rest is history. And that was it. It's, as you say that, I, I, one of my notes is definitely that these feel like they're written to be read out. Mm. Like she's definitely mm. taken. I, I don't know what age group you would say this is for. You're you're more on the eleven. Than what kids are kids? Eleven upwards, apparently. Oh, okay. Well, well, eleven. I guess that makes sense. I, I guess I'd even push it lower. Not yeah, that yeah, it aimed at, but I would definitely. Okay, I would read this to, to lower kids. Fun fact is that um, the audio book is apparently exceptionally good and is narr- narrated by uh, David Tennant. Mm. I gave a, a couple hours listen to yesterday, like the first. Oh, okay. Third, I guess it's just. How did you find it? Yeah, it's it's just super solid, I guess. Coming from his Doctor Who, we know he like he has experience with like getting the tones right for kids, mm. and he does uh, muck in like there's a lot of characters. There's literally like characters mm. called like Squiggle, who Squiggles, are like, a, like yes. a thumb-sized character. So he's just yeah. happy to sort of muck in with like the high pitch and the low pitch, and oh, uh, that's good. You know, do do the voices as it were. Yeah, and just hit hit that. That tone and pitch, theatricalize uh, it up. Mm, yeah, 
Um, no, it's quite a joy. Definitely. I don't know if, if you're if, into that audio book style. It's definitely a fun thing to have also. It's free on YouTube. I don't know how long it's going to be there or how long it's been there. Sometimes these things, right. they'll pop up for a few months. Some will yeah. really take it down and it'll pop up somewhere else. But if you yeah. want to check it out, just put it in YouTube. And there's a good mm-hmm. chance. Because I think it's about a five-hour read. Right, okay. How long did mm-hmm. it take you to get through it? As you're quite a quick reader. Three three or so hours, I'd say. I think I just read it at lunch breaks at work. Right, okay. Um, so Which, which is about an hour. Mm-hmm. Now it's sunny. I can sort of sit in the park and, and read, I think. Oh, that's pretty impressive. And this is for all books, but when I hit the halfway mark, mm-hmm. it has that, at least it feels it's speeding up. Like I'm halfway, instead of the book getting bigger, I can see it getting smaller. Yeah. And yeah. It's like a push, like, oh, I, have, I just spent an extra 15 minutes reading and I'll power them. It, it, this isn't a dense book by any means, but no. I think there are only hardback copies out, at least the, mm. the copy I got from the library. But we're interspersed with pictures and, and double yes. page pictures and stuff. And, and the, the writing is sometimes fit around. It's like very playfully written. Yes, in that, um, very much so. I, I guess her, you said she had a design degree. Yeah. You can see her like in one of the interviews she showed, I think it was How to Train Your Dragon, but her giant scrapbook that's like just her mm. initial draft is just written almost. It looks by hand with all the sketches and she just sort of does it playfully in a giant scrapbook rather than right. the type out a book then yeah. I illustrate it she's kind of does it all as one fluid motion that's a cool way to approach things isn't mm-hmm. it? and i think at one point there's like pop-up bits in it and she just lets it the, the initial draft is just super fun mm. letting her imagination run that's awesome i'd mm. love to have that sort of that multiple ta- multiple talents that sort of naturally sit together Mm. So that you can then, you know, if you've got the design and you can draw and you can write good stories, oof, there's just mm. that, that, that page, that white piece of paper becomes a playground. But you, are you mm. starting to get the sense it's very natural for her? Mm. Like this is this is just how she does it naturally. It's not like she writes novels and she thought this one was really hard for me. I'll go into the review roundup. Um, just give you some. I've, I haven't got many because generally it's been pretty pretty successful. Well received book. Yeah, what, smug, what I could... smug, cold-hearted fool did you get a negative review for this from? Oh, I'll give you a name in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's go with some positives. So we've got Katie. I'm going to assume that it was Kerry last time who dumped the book in the bin after five pages, wasn't it? So Katie, she gives this a three and a half point five stars. This story was so cute. I really enjoyed it. My one complaint, and I'm not sure if it's because of anything to do with the book, or well, it's just because it's middle grade, so that's the age group it's aimed mm-hmm. at, is that I didn't really connect with any of the characters. I kind of found my indifference on what actually happened to them. But I still enjoyed the story, and there were a bunch of twists that I didn't see coming, and that kept me entertained. I still recommend this, especially to people who like fantasy stories and stories aimed at younger audiences. So pin in, like you say, put a pin in that that Ooh. indifference towards the characters. <laughs> Um, for Ron with a four star adorable book illustrations that have a sarcastic wit to them which I always love it's a children's book so of course it's a quick read for an adult wonderful story though and then Jade with the four stars wow this book started with a bang and ended with one this is a story of finding out who you are and finding friends in unlikely people it's not about where someone comes from but who they are inside this is a story full of magic, adventures, and loads of different beings just trying to survive. The writing was so easy to get into and kept me gripped the whole time. I will be picking up the next one straight away. Nice. And then the negatives. Violet Dory. I expected nothing, and still it disappointed me at the highest level. Eesh. <laughs> I've been seduced in store by the fame of the author, the promise of original drawings, a magical middle-grade story. In the end, I suffered for almost 400 pages of boring plot punctuated by lazy drawings. The story itself could have been okay, and here I don't say good, I say okay, but it was not worth the volume and could have been told in less than 150 pages. There is no need to waste time and space to tell endlessly the same thing again and again. The author's writing style also didn't help me to dig into the book. You love it or you hate it. In my case, I hated it. English vocabulary is rich enough to produce a large panel of emotions. 
even in a children's book. I truly think anybody can do better than simply using caps or bold to describe strong feelings. I never ask a book to be pompous, but I ask it to provide a minimum of quality. To finish, let's talk quickly about the characters. They don't deserve more than a few lines. Wish the warrior princess was pretty much okay with a spark of bravery and good sense, but she has nothing good enough for me to truly care about her fate. Zar, on the other hand, was the most despicable person, fictional or not, I've ever encountered. I know sometimes people like rude, disgusting brats, but I don't. And the following adventures of a moron king for 400 pages was too much to ask of me. Righty, jeez. Yeah, she didn't like it at all, did she? Yeah, she um, did. I've got one more. This is Sudan Shaman. I really disliked this book. I was so excited when I read that this was the author of How to Train Your Dragon, but I couldn't tolerate either of the characters. Zar is the most despicable human being. He is a little brat with zero character development. He continues to be a brat from the start to the end. Despite everything he goes through, he keeps reverting back to being a selfish, self-restored little jerk. And Wish, yes, she did display some heroic traits and was definitely a lot more interesting to read about than Zar, but I felt she still didn't have a lot for me to hold on to or root for. The book was filled with illustrations which were fun and reminded me of Roald Dahl's style, but even that wasn't enough for me to enjoy the book or to give it more than one star. Their adventure was not exciting. The random creatures popping up here and there were annoying for me more than they were anything else. I hated how Zar kept losing it, throwing tantrums, and suddenly the page was filled with huge capitalised words. I mean, chill, seriously. Talk about deeply rooted anger issues. And then to think, there's a second part that we have to read more about these two characters. Nope, no way. I felt like this book was maybe trying too hard to be in the style of Roald Dahl, but that doesn't work. Roald Dahl was Roald Dahl. There is no one else like him. Interesting. Mm. Wow, there's a lot to unpack with those negatives, people. So there we go. Those are, that's a review roundup done with. What do you think? Do you agree with our negatives? Was Zar too obnoxious and bratty with the whole story? Did he have any sort of character arc? There were points of over-obnoxious frustration. I'm not mm-hmm. going to lie. Mm-hmm. I just thought... All I was thinking was like, ah, oh, okay, because they're going to give him an arc over four books. Or well, I knew mm. I knew there was more than one. I didn't mm. know how many there was going to be, but I, I would never assume there's just going to be two random kids books. Mm-hmm. So I just, okay, so this is going to be a series or, or three or four, or at least the minimum trilogy. Everyone wants a trilogy at least. Yes. Uh, so it's like, okay, at what some point in the book, you just realize he's going to have to learn this over the course of all the books, not this mm. one. Because when his... Uh, his sprite was laying, dying in his hands, and he'd wrecked the castle and potentially yeah. brought witches back to life. And his dad <laughs> is angry because people are physically hurt, and he's saying, "These are your friend, like these little yeah. beings follow you, and you put them in danger." And then he threw a tantrum, just saying, "It's not my fault. You mm-hmm. never trust me." That's when I was like, "Oh, kids, no." Because <laughs> this is in the last quarter of the book or so, and this is when I'm like, "This yeah. is where I would want you to show." Like afterwards, he did have a quiet moment to himself. Yeah. But it was just like the reader said, he was just reacting to someone else again. And it was like, okay, not that it's a big book, but it's like we have to take it in proportion of what this book is. You can't just say, Mm. oh, because it's only, you know, 400 pages in a kid's book, but with text, it's probably the equivalent of like 200 pages. You can't say, oh, because it's short, it doesn't matter. Like it's still the journey, it's epic Mm -hmm. journey. So when we're still dealing with that, that was a point I think I wrote down. Okay, he's he's pretty obnoxious. Yes. And this is the point where I would have wanted him to learn a lesson. And he Mm. simultaneously did and didn't. It's like he learned his lesson, but chose not to act on it or Mm. change his behavior going forward. Yeah. So if people were uh, over sick of him, I, I understand that. Yeah, no, I can, I, I agree. I, I felt like, like you say, he. There were moments where he should have learned from his thing. Everybody around him was telling him to learn from this, and he refused to. Mm. And even when every action that he took, the, the 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 cause of his actions were negative, he still didn't open his eyes. And then finally, at the end, you think he's going to actually wake up, but he's actually it turns around. He says, "Ha ha! See, I told you it was all going to be okay. I mm. was right." And you're like, oh, 
Come even on. with the consequences mm. plain, mm-hmm. it's, it's still you almost receiving. killed one of your friends. <laughs> mm. So yes, I, I do see that. I, I had I had no qualms of wish. No, nope. um, I guess it felt like she took a bit of a back seat to Sar, but I don't know if that's just because Sar's larger than life. Mm. Like if you split it down, they actually did have the same page time. I quite like road trip movies, and when I realised that this was just going to be set in the boundaries of of where they both are, I was yes. not disappointed. But I was like, okay, I'll, I'll get with that because it's not like we visit the castle. So it was mm-hmm. like, here's where he lives. Here's everything. Well, yeah. what would you say in the Iron World, and now here we're to the Wizard World, and we're going to mm. build in the I- in the Wizard World, and that's sort of enough. It's like okay, yeah, it's almost but, three points, wasn't it? There was the Bad Woods or the mm-hmm, Wild the Woods, in between, as it were, his home. And then her home, which was mm-hmm. either side of the wild woods. Mm. Very so like, simple. Um, I guess going forward, are they, uh, would I like to expand? Mm-hmm. The whole novel moved at quite a breakneck speed. It did, didn't it? it never yes. lingered on anything. If I didn't particularly, there was nothing I didn't enjoy, but if something was a bit like, okay, I want to get past this to the next exciting bit, it mm-hmm. kind of happened quick enough. One of my other questions was, what did you think to the overall adventure? Uh, I liked it enough. Uh, like I said, it was um, it wasn't like a set adventure in that, mm. you know, hey, you have this object, go and travel across these dangerous lands, and plop it down here to to save the world. Mm. The, the terms and conditions are set at the beginning. It was mm-hmm. quite arguably me rendering. It was it was was setting mm-hmm. out to do this as a wish, and by the time the plot kicked in, in that I guess it wasn't that deep in that. Okay, we have bad magic in the kid. And mm-hmm. we're going to go here to extract it. Mm-hmm. And save Squeedles. Mm. I guess it it sort of set a fairly, like, an epic adventure on a small scale, because it was the equivalent of, yeah. let's go to my house and yeah. get the first aid kit. We're at your house and you've <laughs> yeah. cut yourself. We're going to go to my house and sort of, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it did do a good job of making it quite epic when you're in there. I guess it set the tone and it sort of snuck in the reintroduction of witches into this world. Mm, mm-hmm. It's funny. A lot of reviews say that the cartoon, the films are nothing like the books in How to Train Your Dragon. It's like in reading this, I could really understand how to train your dragon would go about. Like very similar themes in this, it felt like mm. the whole living up to your parents' expectations was, yes. was super high in this. It's nothing. It's not like oh, she's doing this again. It just felt like it's a theme she loves to explore. For me, the the overall adventure and story had enough to keep me engaged. Mm. Um, I didn't feel that the villains or or the witches um, were given enough impetus. They were there wasn't enough drive behind. Them. I didn't really understand why why they were there, where they went to, how they were banished. There was a lot of unsaid things going mm. on. And I guess that's going to come up later on. But you just knew, you know, the the, the opening of the story is basically Zars going, because he has no magic, Mm. and he's been frustrated by this. He's amassed a group of friends who are quite loyal to him. That include cats and um, giants. And 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 Marad. He's got his own army, arguably. Yeah, it's it's quite cool, the people that he has with him. Those characters I really liked. Mm. the, The amalgamation of all of them. Yeah, I think the side characters overtook. Mm-hmm. And not overtook, but like without them. They were more likable than Zar. Mm. Yeah. Maybe that's by design, though. Mm, that's true. Uh, I also really liked uh, the spoon, the characters, the spoon, which is magical spoon that sort mm-hmm. of rides on her shoulder. You just want one. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Really, you just want one. Like, okay, it's like having a hamster that yeah. you could just carry around with you, but that <laughs> doesn't like poop and have, have you know. Yeah. I guess it, it does do a good job of just making you want to explore the world. Mm. And it, I guess it, you feel it out there. Mm. I guess that's the world building. Mm-hmm. But you do feel that there's more out there that you want to explore. And I get the sense in the following books they will in some way or form. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I don't, that's what's one, another one of my questions is what do you, do you think of the world building? Uh, I guess I thought it was just pretty solid. I guess there's these little hints about the bigger world. I think anyway. Mm-hmm. I guess not, no passage springs to mind, but like I say, it just you can feel you can feel yourself wanting to explore mm-hmm. in a very like a fun fun way. Mm. I think the fact that we were only given these three key areas: the wild woods or bad woods, mm. Zars' home and Wish's home. There was enough 
um, it allu- alluded to there being a much bigger and wider expanse um, to explore and go and play in and have more adventures in. Mm. Um, and I think that he did a good job of that. I also, I also really enjoyed uh, Zar's older brother, who is constantly, uh, I can't remember what his name was, but he was constantly sort of just berating him and one up. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess that felt very standard to me. You know what I mean? Like the sort of, if, if we were watching a high, like a, like a King film, people say, and it's like, okay, here's the high school bully. And what yeah. he's going to be like, it's like, hey, yeah. point Dexter. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Um, it's so a I staple. Guess, mm, not formal, formulaic, but mm-hmm. just, just there to do that job. Yes. Yeah. Mm. To prove the point and further drama at home. Do you agree with this statement, Scott? The novel immediately introduces Tsar and his massive entourage through heavy exposition, and I immediately felt as though I was being bombarded with names and concepts, and the early chapters felt as though they lacked focus. There was just too many voices and too little plot. Uh, to an extent, yes. When we're at the end, and uh, people are leaning in and whispering in his ear, and this guy's doing that, I didn't know who was who. Mm-hmm. Like there'll be a name at the end of like a, a sprite or a fairy that got in the way and did something. And I'll just, I just get this, that I understood who it was without actually knowing who they are. Yes. Um, so they were yes. like almost part of entourage rather than yeah. individuals. He could have just said one of the gang did this mm. and it was yes. the same as that name. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, having this mirage of different different fairy animals around him was part of the magic. Yes. I felt it also lent, it's almost like a product of the fact that a lot of it was illustrated. Mm. So you could almost show some of that on the screen, like Snowcat 1, Snowcat 2, Snowcat 3, mm. or whatever. They just looked really good on page. The smaller ones felt very, uh, I guess, underpolished, if I'm honest. Right. Yeah. There's the full page spreads. No, like, I don't know, 85% of the time were really nice. Yeah. And I don't know if that's an intentional thing. Because of the age range, it's a sort of encouragement for kids. Mm. That these little sketches you do, like, can be something and to encourage yes. you. I was never good at sketching as a kid. No. But same. my friend was. He was really good at it. And we, we just had these stupid games where we would, like, we would just draw a target like a man. Yeah, and then across the page, I would draw like a little stick man shooting him, yeah, a bullet midway, and then it, he would draw like Captain America with a shield protecting that bullet, oh, and nice. I would draw something to take out that Captain America, and he would draw something to take out what I took mm. out, and it would just it would spread on. But I always felt mine were rubbish. His his were really good. He's got yeah. on to be an animator, he right? Had, he Instagram. He kind of kept it up. He's he's really good. He's that sort of. If I said to him, can you, can you just send me like a like a little quick zombie? Mm-hmm. It, it feels good. Whereas if yeah. I try and do a zombie, it just feels like, what's your style? Stick man with drool coming out of his eyes. Mm. <laughs> and I'm not saying that Christopher doesn't have a style, but it, it was basically, it reminded me of my NAF mm-hmm. sketches rather mm-hmm. than the polished ones. Like it was scanned from those original sketches rather than gone over in a in a nice pen and given a bold outline yes, yes. and definitely people will argue that's the charm and i'll say yep fair enough yeah, and i'm yeah. not saying i didn't like that style mm. but like there are there's some books where it's like i would if, if someone gave me that in a little frame mm-hmm. I'd, I'd really like that yeah you stick it up on a wall mm-hmm. i guess in mm-hmm. all these interviews she was uh if if you just put in like Waterstones masterclass, she did these three half hour classes, and she's just right, talking okay. to the camera. She is great. I guess she knows she? her audience, so she she talks with real good enthusiasm. Like this is brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's it's a real pleasure just to hear her talk. And uh, it was just that like one was on character. Mm-hmm. I don't know. One was on research or something. But, mm-hmm. but one was like. So I always tell like she does a lot of talks with like classes of kids, and she says, "Wouldn't you like a book?" that you can write down anything you would and it would never be judged. No teacher's ever going to mark your spelling. You don't have to worry about that. Like you can just write down whatever you want, really need any thought that comes to your head, mm-hmm. any nonsensical story, and it's all yours. And she's like, that's what just a journalist 
She's like, I mm. cannot advise any more than just getting a notebook to carry with you. And every little idea just sort of goes in there. That's and I really guess cool. that you can feel that through the like the style of what she does, the sort yeah. of like I think she showed like her very first doodle sketch of hiccup. Yeah. It's nothing like the final piece, but it's like, well, that sort of inspired. Yeah. Not just a beloved story, but a very lucrative. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Would, have you ever kept a journal? No, I uh, I quite like painting and doing certain artworks and claying and writing. But mm. I find I just want to go for the final piece. Right, okay, yeah. It's Rather like, than... it's. I guess you, you play the piano, so it's a bit different. But it's like the mm-hmm. few times I've tried to do something on the piano... I just I want to learn this song. I'm going to learn this song. Mm. Like I'm just going to go for broke rather than. Yeah, yeah. So that's sort of like I, I wish I did. And the few times I've tried, I just uh, I'm not saying this is the case, but it felt like I was wasting time. Yeah. I like I'm jotting that. down something, but I already know the grand masterpiece novel I want to write. Yeah. So why didn't I do that? And I know that's not how it works. Like yeah. I've listened to so many podcasts and interviews and all that stuff of writers. And like this, she's just, I can't, like I'm literally saying it will change your life if you do this. And I'm going, mm-hmm. yeah, but I'm better than that. I'm different. <laughs> I'm different. I would just, right, yeah, <laughs> I'll just do the masterpiece now. I haven't got time for that. And then, like I said, I can, I'll see an artist sketchbook. And I'm like, mm. that, that itself is a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I'll just, I'll just see people practicing. I'm thinking that's why they're good. Yeah, it's not a sublet. It's not they wrote a masterpiece and they do a journal. It's like they wrote a masterpiece because they refined it. Because, mm. like when you're journaling or doing that thing, you're working on the craft. That's it. It's the practice. It's the process <laughs> of practicing. It's a here's a little completely left field. We haven't done one this episode, so here's my left mm-hmm. field. Oh, this is funny. Just in an <laughs> interview, I think it was Jay Z. He said, "Eminem is always writing." Oh, wow. He's just always jotting stuff down. He has a pen. He'll just pull it out on a car and be writing. And then he said, well, what is, is this your lyrics? He said, no, basically, I just write all the time and I won't use 90% of this. I'll just chuck it. But when I need to write something, I'll just be able to. And this is how. Right. If I just ho- if I just can write, if, if you just say, uh, here's my watch, write a rap about it. I'll just write that rap in the book. Yeah. And that's, I'm not going to use that, but I'm practicing for when I need to rap. If we're in the studio and you say, yo, it's your time. You've got an hour. Give me 10 minutes and I, I will write a rap. And I know yeah. I can do it in that time limit because I've been honing it. Yes. That's kind of, that's not the same for sure, but that's the. It's almost creating feathers for the back catalog of quips and qu- and, and, and prose and mm. Uh, lyrics and you're just, it's just writing everything and anything down on a page at some point, some when, especially as a rapper like Eminem who has to think fast and often, mm. on, his, often on his toes in the, like the, the, you know, the free forming sessions. Mm. Um, he can pull on that at any given moment. Yeah. I guess when you think about instruments, it's the equivalent of just jamming. Mm. You, you don't yeah. just want to play the instrument for your final song. It's like, you just want to have fun with it and, not yeah, like this isn't something that's going on an album. I'm just jamming for the fun. Bit, of it. Yeah, learning the building blocks is what they talk about in music a lot. Of you know, understanding chord progressions and how to play scales and things like that mm-hmm. is the most boring process of practicing. But once you've got them down, you are then into, able to riff with right, anybody right, right. that also understands understands that skill set, as it were. Mm. Yeah, I guess that's what Crash is saying with the with the. The notebook. Mm. I mean, what every mm. author everywhere says: just it, it, don't worry about the importance. Don't worry about yeah. the finished project. That's almost just a byproduct mm-hmm. <laughs> of writing is a finished publishing mm. novel. Did, did did watching those videos on YouTube inspire your writing? Or your? Uh, it just made me wish. I just get that muck muck regret of uh-huh. yeah. I wish I kept a diary like that for the last year. I wish mm-hmm. I wish I had done that. 20 years ago and I was now good at that level uh yeah sort of backfired and it made me just think I'm too old and it's too late to do that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you're never too old Scott no no for listeners sure. you're never too old pick up or do whatever you want to do i sorry I, I guess it inspired me to want to do it but I haven't taken any action mm-hmm. and we talked recently about just me feeling like I just take on too much like okay, not that mm. but like 
I already have like an unfinished art project mm -hmm. and a few ideas I want to do after that. And I'm, I'm wary of like starting the one I want to start. And then I have two unfinished art pieces. Yes. And uh, what <sighs> part of me says the Josh Whedon uh, eat your cake first method mm -hmm. is great. And saying if there's five things you want to do, do the thing that's like the most excitement because you'll get joy out of that and you'll do it. Like I think he was saying when he's writing a script, if I want to write the action, I'm going to write that action, even though I haven't built up to that action. I find that very hard to do, yeah. especially if it means starting something new. Right. Because then the weight of having unfinished projects suddenly just feels like, A, it's all a bit futile. Because mm -hmm. I've just written another abandoned project. And after like 40 years of abandoned projects, it's yeah. like, well, what's, <laughs> what's, what's the point in starting something that, that doesn't have any yes. fruit? The only thing I'm good at is abandoning things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there an award? But that's, you know what? That's, I don't know why I'm, I'm not trying to dis, disinterest anyone listening. Mm. Go for it. Like mm. we just said, it's about the fun of the process. Mm -hmm. Go for it. If you don't try, you don't succeed. Mm. Start now, and in a year, you'll be glad. Mm -hmm. Like all those, oh, I wish I started it. before. It's like, well, start now, and then yeah. in, in 20 years' years time, you'll be like, yeah. well, you did. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Going back to the book, mm -hmm. what did you make of the villains in this book? Interesting, because there sort of wasn't one until there was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it yeah. was not sudden, but the twist, and then that... It, Knowing how many pages are left, you're like, okay, we're not gonna. I guess you should be sort of taught that the villain was there all along pulling yes. the strings, but we don't really get a snapshot mm -hmm. of that villain. Just uh, uh, it's like an intro to the mm -hmm. next book and, and what mm -hmm. the series is going to be about. Mm. I mean, if you read the intro, it was pretty obvious, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the sort of the preamble info dump about how the, how the world is set. And there's there's something so fun in just the narration. Mm -hmm. You know, there's bits of like, don't worry, in the end, it's going to turn out all right. Hey, listener, yeah. are you like, hey, reader, you're not worried, are you? In the big yeah. way, like she's she has a wry humour and she's winking to us, the audience. Yes. Uh, in one of the interviews, so something at the beginning of this book is here's something for you, uh, reader. I am one of the characters in this book, but I won't mm -hmm. tell you which one. I loved that. I believe, so now I'm thinking about what some of the reviews are. In the fourth one, there's a page at the back, the, the right. afterwards, not the afterward, the, what's it called, the prologue, the pre yeah. the, the, yeah. the prologue afterwards. And it says, if you're reading this to skip ahead because you want to know who the narrator is, you're very naughty and you need to go back and read it throughout the book. <laughs> Brilliant. And she just said she got like people saying like her kids were reading this and they were chuckling because she basically preempted. Like and I think a lot of kids flat out did that. Yeah. And it was just like she's there with the kids. She's she's mm -hmm. not just writing it for kids and saying some kids will get it, some kids won't. She knows her audience and she's playing yes. with them. She's flat yeah. out teasing them personally. It's like for every kid that did it, it's like, damn it, she, it's their feeling like me. she wrote this book for them. It's and genius. That is such it's... a nice touch. Yeah. Do you, I do loved you think it. you know who the character was? I've got Instantly, no idea I thought it was cool. the spoon. I was like, okay, so we have a spoon oh, without a voice. Spoon, yeah. Definitely. And then at the end, I was like, okay, it's the witch. Oh. It's like say it's like a non look at an, an overwatching entity that's there from the start, but that is mm -hmm. staying quiet. I could mm -hmm. be wrong. I don't know. Uh, her books have a, such a reoccurring theme and within the films of How to Train Your Dragon that not that there doesn't need to be a villain, but like when you're inherently taught something as a kid, like you hate wizards, wizards hate warriors, dragons hate Vikings, Viking hates dragons, that like there's a, there's a questioning of it, that it's just mm -hmm. a misunderstanding. And those themes are very strong through here. And yeah. so I don't know if the witches are going to turn out to be villains or yep. just another faction of the un misunderstood. Of the misunderstood, completely agree. Um, I, I, I did pull a quote from some of my research and it was on the villains, and it says, the villains of the story are also a bit flat, with witches simply being evil, with no motivation. While this does lead to a few creepy encounters, it sadly made them a bit too forgettable. Hopefully this is something that will be expanded on in the next book. 
Mm. And I would I would agree with that. In essence, they are they aren't overtly menacing, especially the one that gets taken down in Sars place mm-hmm. um it just sort of appears and you've got the glowy feathers that sort of alert you to their whereabouts but hopefully like this that comment says that they will get expanded on and you like you say they will their story will become a more mm. apparent and maybe they are just misunderstood like the warriors are to the wizards and the wizards are to the warriors like it feels purposeful that she mm-hmm. didn't expand on the witches like you mm-hmm. said arguably there's there's too many characters going on here yeah, it's completely. almost if they're going to be the villain of a set of books, it's like you'd rather she takes the space and time to do it in the next book properly mm-hmm. than just squeeze it in here when we're, yeah. we're still trying to learn who the heroes are. Mm-hmm. So, so like, I kind of didn't mind that too much. Yeah, I, I did enjoy the 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 idea of the final villain and its location and how it was pulling the strings mm. throughout, even though it was a very small part of the story and it was right at the end, it permeated backwards over everything you'd read. It was like it said, pulling the strings and leading everybody to this point. And that was really nicely done. Yeah. It didn't feel like she came up with it at the end and squeezed mm. it in. It was, mm-hmm. it was woven and seeded through. Mm-hmm. Which, mm. uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, and my final question is, are you going to read more of the series? I, I guess so, yeah. Um, I, I think I got this from the library. I did see one at like a second store and I was tempted to get it. Uh, mm-hmm. I just didn't because I'm just over, uh, pff, my house is just sort of boxed. <laughs> but it would be nice if I had a shelf. Like, oh, I've just got books in all these shelves. I don't have that. I mean, you don't have bookshelves. So right. there's just boxes of books squeezed in and it's not a fun Oh, it's nice to look at. It's just I have a storage container with a suitcase full of books. So it's right. uh, buying hardbacks right now. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny. I was I was thinking like I, I I didn't know if you'd pick this up from a thrift. So it was just a random book we were reviewing, and there's four. And I'm I'm very hesitant of like is can we review book two in this because it's like uh, I feel like the themes are going to stay what they are. Mm-hmm. We're not going to get much of an expansion. So in my head, I was worried, like, if we review book two, is there going to be less talk to talk about? Because mm-hmm. we're going to talk about the plot a bit, but like this one, it's it's not sparse, but you don't want to go super spoily everything. And mm-hmm. it's not like a really long, deep book, so we can't necessarily like, what have been got this bit of the plot? What about this twist? It's, it's mm-hmm. can we get an episode out of book two when it's exploring more of the same? I guess mm-hmm. we'll find out if it's something you yes, want to read. I'm happy to. I just want to know who the narrator is. Let, let's, let's say if... We, yeah, brilliant. But let's say we weren't going to do any more podcasts on this. Would you read the second book? I I would probably come across... Like I came across it the other day. Mm-hmm. I would probably come across it and go, yeah, I guess I wouldn't seek it out. But it now now I've actually thoroughly enjoyed this. It, if I see it in stores or in like... Around here in in, in Toronto, mm-hmm. everyone just has like a mailbox full of books. They call them like mm. a free library, and you get three on the street. These books will spike out to me visually, and I'll probably yeah. grab them and read them. Yeah. So yeah, sorry, okay. that short answer was yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would pick up the second book if I stumble across it. If, it. if it thrusts itself into my world, I will willingly embrace it with both arms. Mm. Um, but I wouldn't purchase it at full price. For myself, <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's just a really like we love these books. He's like, I recommend them to anyone. I wouldn't pay full price. It's not worth my money. But... Yeah, <laughs> it's for me as an adult. I'm. i They're not aimed at me, but I have enjoyed reading it for two pounds. Mm. It's been bang on the money. What I would say though, as a parent, this would be a joy to read to an eight-year-old upwards. Mm -hmm. it is perfect for somebody who has a bit of performing arts background or just loves to role play all the elements are here for this Mm. it'd be a bedtime story to your child so in that sense i highly recommend purchasing this book and reading it to your kids because it's a very nice story for that Mm. age group and will endear you to your children if you put on all the voices squeaky jewels yeah, she that really knows how to like write for kids. Mm. You know, like the the spelling book I thought was a fantastic idea and a very yeah. great thing words. And then at one point we discover uh which is like dyslexic. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just a, a really, like, not playful, but it's not hammered in. Mm-hmm. It's just sort of discovered in a time where like, the word dyslexia doesn't doesn't mean anything. In, mm-hmm. And she, I guess she's from a tribe that doesn't necessarily rely on it. Mm-hmm. But the, the idea of a book of spells and you have to spell it is just such a such a neat, playful idea. And I love the fact the pages are always falling out of it. Yeah, but the, the kids are really naughty, but you never get the sense they're bad kids. No. They're just, and I think that would really speak to kids. Yes. You know, when I, when I was at home uh, over Christmas and my, my brother was just sort of like, not yelling at one of the kids, but just like, just calm, like, you know, you just, just sit down and eat, we'll play after, just trying to, you know, get them in tow mm. a bit. And the kid was just like, you know, it's Christmas, so a lot of senses. It was just like, you're always yelling at me. Why is it always me? You know, feeding mm. that sort of the world of unfairness that, that you can mm-hmm. feed as a kid. And I guess this it's... really sort of felt like it was just, she she just knows that that kind of exists. Like the kids are just getting in trouble and they are naughty, but they're just trying to play. And they're explore exploring the and learning. Yes, completely. And bad kids, even though I said Zara was an obnoxious we're not going to do bad language on this. Mm-hmm. But, um, even though we said Zara was like obnoxious and a pain in the butt, mm-hmm. you never get the sense it's for the sake of being bad. Mm-hmm. Even when we literally have a list of all of his pranks, mm. get a sense he's not a troublemaker in that in that mean sense. Mm-hmm. He's just pranking because it's fun and it's not about yeah. hurting someone. It's about yeah. his enjoyment. Yes. I hope that's not excusing a bully's behaviour. <laughs> I agree in the sense of what you're saying about being free and being kids and being allowed to be kids. Mm. And that definitely comes across in this book. Um, You see it a lot with parents who are just like, come on, keep up, keep up, keep up, Mm. keep up. It's like, actually, stop rushing their children. They're still, they're exploring and learning. Let them stop and smell the roses Mm. or pluck the rose petals off. (laughs) That, that that's the fine line, I guess, of mm. like kids are just going to keep pushing. Mm-hmm. So you do you do forgive a bit of naughtiness, and mm-hmm. then it just it goes up five percent within ten mm-hmm. minutes, and then mm-hmm. in the next ten minutes it's gone up fifteen percent. And that line of like, oh, okay, I just need you to tone it back down, and I'm not trying to yell at you, yeah, uh, but it's like just go back to where you were, like fifty percent naughtiness, yeah. where it's cheeky. Because <laughs> it's yeah. like you're gonna get hurt. Someone that thing of it's just you, it's just escalating to someone gets hurt. Yeah, there is there is a line definitely, and she balances it beautifully in this book. Yep, Wonderful. Really. So, what would you give it? Uh, top marks, whatever the top is. Five. I'll give it a five yeah. out of five. I'm not gonna like bash this anyway. Like little little things that were like yeah, okay, mm-hmm. like Zaha was a bit boring, a bit boring towards the end. It didn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Or what I, I did. Yeah, I'd give it a four. Hmm. Like there's, I feel like there's a master plan for Zar. Yeah. So like, oh, did gonna... I did I ask this? What there was one more question. I think I don't sure whether I asked it. I think you sent it in text about the merit of judging him in this book. Yes, that was right. it. That was the one. Yeah, that was the exact question. Uh, Is it well, too it... soon to judge a character when it's a part of a four book series? Well, the only one I could say that you seem to like Zar's brother, mm. but being the youngest of four brothers. I, I was on Zar's side with that. Yeah, really? I didn't yeah. like the older brother, that that sense of like, I'm older and I'm better. And it's not that it's true, but just mm-hmm. being a kid and being the worst at everything, there is a sense of frustration mm. in that. Okay. And so I wasn't on the brother's side at any point. And it's yeah. like he was better. He was like the, the, the equivalency of the chosen one. Yeah. Um, but I, I sort of like, okay. I don't like Zara, but I'm on his side on this. That's interesting. So I've I've always been the older brother, mm. and it was always frustrating having trying little, to having yeah a little annoying rat when I'm yeah. on my feet. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Constantly poking and prodding you, and you're like, ah, I need to be alone. <laughs> Why can't you just be normal? <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think mean, I got that phone to be a good few times. Mm. <laughs> I think it's a bit early to judge him as a character. He doesn't really grow enough, maybe. Um, there could be some elements, like we've alluded to at the beginning, he could mm. learn but, from a few of those mistakes, but hopefully, maybe he has. It just very I don't know if it's again. a sense of, like, he's learning, and it's like, you know, he shows real remorse, and he will give everything up to save his friend. Mm-hmm. But we're also, like, 
reminded that, but he's still the same cheeky. We haven't broken him. He's still the yeah. same cheeky character. Don't think that he's going to be like he's scared straight for the next three books. <laughs> yeah. As it were. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Brilliant. What did you think, readers, listeners, watchers, to uh, the Wizards of Once? But because they did a cold dwell. <laughs> <laughs> Send us your thoughts and love that you yeah. provided or, or yeah. in the comments. Uh, don't forget to watch some of those videos that Scott's going to put a links to in the description. Maybe they'll inspire you to uh, write your own short stories, full mm. stories, become an illustrator, or both. Chase the creators. The world is your oyster. Go get them. Thank you very much for listening. Join us again. Bye. Hey, we're going to wrap it up around there. I want to thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed. Join us in the next episode. And until then, support your local bookstores and have a great day.